Hey everyone, what's up? It is the Unpro Pro, and welcome to the next series of the RPG Maker VX Ace tutorials. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. Now, when you first open RPG Maker, you'll see the, this giant blank screen. Just click here, or press Control N, and create yourself a little project. After you do that, you'll be you'll be showed this. So let's go over some things here. All right, file and edit are pretty much self-explanatory. Um, and file you can save your project. You can also compress your game data, which means Yes, I will save changes to Scatman's Potato. <laughs> Anyways, so, yes, that is the very creative name that I came up with. What this basically does is it allows you to export your game so other people can play it. If you're going to produce this towards gamers who don't, who you don't think is going to have RPG Maker and all that, click this right here. It increases the file size, but it makes it so everybody can play it. Even if they don't have RPG Maker VX Ace, the RTP, which is the runtime package. Alright, um, if you, yeah, I recommend doing this as well, or you can just delete your RV data, but then I think they can get into it somehow still. So yeah, I do recommend, um, creating an, an encrypted archive. So, next, okay, let's go on over to the mode. Alright, right here you have map mode, which allows you to draw on the map, all kinds of cool stuff. And you, uh, you have events, which allows you to create events. And, um... If you created an event, you can click the event, and you can go to cut, copy, delete, paste, and all that, or you can just drag it around, do whatever you want. You can also right-click, and you have the same thing. All right, um, now, we also have the region. The region is, like, something very interesting. So, say you want... Okay, say... You know what? Let's go Pokemon style. I'll show you what I mean. So, say you have a little map, right? And you have a... Let's, let's say this dark spot represents grass or something. You know, tall grass, like in how in Pokemon you can only run into battles in tall grass. Well, if you want to only run into battles on the tall grass, you would simply draw a region there. Was there one? Okay. You would draw a region over it. Oops. And go back to map mode. And whenever you're done drawing your regions, right click, go to properties on your map down here. And in the encounters, you can, you know, instead of just setting whole map, Say specify region ID. The so one, and you just keep mark them all one. And there's a chance that you you can run into a slime when you're only on that area that you marked. So that's a that's a way you can um, you can kind of have different battles. Like say if you're on the world map or something, and instead of just being tall grass, let's say it's trees. Let's say you can run into different enemies when you're on the field than you do when you're in the trees. And that could be a pretty cool thing. So that's basically what regions do. Now on the draw mode, you have pencil, which allows you to draw like like that. Um, you have rectangle, which allows you to draw a square. You have the ellipse, which allows you to draw a circle. You have flood fill, which paints, like completely fills up the entire area. And then you have where was it? Oh, yeah. the shadow pen, which actually is really good, actually. So basically, say you have, like, a house or something, and you notice... Here, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to change the tile set really quick so I can show you. So say you have a building, right? You're like, okay, yeah, I just made a building. See this shadow here? You can either remove that, or you can extend it, or you can angle it differently. So it's like, um, different lighting. So that's what the shadow pen does. I'm going to go back to the default map, because I'm, I'm going to be explaining tile sets here in a bit. Erase all that. Alright, so that's, the, that's where the draw thing does. Uh, and the scale, if you have a very large map, you can use this to scale out, and so you can edit a lot. <laughs> that's pretty much what that's for. Um, in the tools, you have the database, which I'll go over this in a minute. Okay, you have the database resource manager, which is where you go to import custom graphics. You see the animations, battle backs, battlers, characters, bases, parallax, pictures. Pictures actually come in handy a lot. System, tile sets, tiles or titles one, titles two. The BGM background music. You got background sounds like storm, sea, river, rain, quake, fire, drips, darkness, clock, and wind. You got music effects, which is ME. You also got sound effects. Well, okay, ME's basically happen like um, at the end of a battle and stuff like that. SE, you got sound effects, which play pretty much anytime you want them to. 
and you got movies. Movies is something that was added to VX Ace that's not in VX, um, the original. So, movies like make everything really fun and cool. Uh, they do have to be OGV format, I believe. I could be wrong on that. Let's see. Yep, OV, OGV. They have to be OB, ah, oh, no, OB, yep. They have to be Obi-Wan Kenobi. Wait, did I say that right? I probably did not. Anyways, they have to be OGV format. So, let's get on with it. Okay, in the game area, you can do a play test. You can do launch in full screen. That just checks it, so it starts in full screen if you want. You can do a show console if you're a programmer and you're programming in Ruby. And this will show you the console and stuff. <laughs> you can also open the games folder, which if you ever need to copy all these files and send them to somebody who can help or something like that, if you're having troubles, this is how you would do that. You would select all of it. You would do compress. Yeah. If you have WinRAR. If you don't, you just simply right click, make a new zip file, and then you would drag all this in there. All right, so to help, pretty much this is going to be your best friend if you're a programmer. If you go to the help and you go to search and you type in like a function like super, for example, and uh, it just tells you all kinds of stuff. See, it tells you about Ruby and all that, which I will be going over in the future, hopefully. Okay, now let's get on with the database. By pressing F9, you can go to the database. By pressing F10, you got the resource manager. Script editor is F11. And here's the sound test, actually. I forgot about this. The sound test allows you to test music and everything else. I'm going to turn this down so it's not overkill. It allows you to test background sounds. And you can do music effects. You can do sound effects. All kinds of cool stuff. You can always import your own, like I said earlier, through the resource manager. Now, actually, I will go in the database. I will go into the database in the next episode. This episode was pretty much an overview on how everything works and all that. So, thank you guys for watching, and stay tuned for more.